My name is Dr. K.R. Balakrishnan. I'm a cardiac surgeon and I specialize in heart transplantation. Heart transplants have been uh, performed in this world for the last uh, 30 years. And in India, it was done for the first time in the year 1994 after uh, an act of parliament permitted um, organs to be removed from brain dead cadavers. But in the last few years, especially the last six or seven years, the procedure has become very standardized and <coughs> with greater awareness, more and more cadaver organs are being available, made available because of donation by, um, by generous uh, relatives of victims of road traffic accidents. So when is heart transplant indicated? When a patient has end-stage heart failure and the heart is so badly damaged that it cannot be repaired and when uh, the expected uh, lifespan with uh, ordinary medical treatment is not more than a few months. Typically these are patients who are breathless at rest, who are urine output is low, who are getting admitted repeatedly in the hospital. A lot of them get admitted every month or every few weeks. And this also includes patients with a massive heart attack and where despite angioplasty and other measures, the blood pressure is low or 60 or 70 millimeters and they have no chance of living. All those patients can be completely uh, made normal by transplanting a new heart. And the procedure involves um, removing the patient's dysfunctional or non-functioning heart and putting a new heart uh, from a healthy individual who has died from other causes. The operation typically takes about three hours and uh, at the end of three hours, the patient is shifted to the intensive care unit. And uh, usually in a matter of about two weeks, the patient is completely recovered and is ready to go back home. And in a matter of six weeks to two months, the patient becomes totally normal. In fact, patients with a transplant have a functional capacity which is the same as a normal person with the original heart. So people are able to run marathons, you can do any kind of strenuous activity and the kind of normal health which they never had for a very long time. The thing to remember is uh, these hearts that are being transplanted belong to some other person. So the body tries to reject this organ. So lifelong you have to be on immunosuppressive drugs, uh, drugs which prevent the heart from rejecting this new organ. Typically this involves three drugs. One is a steroid called prednisolone and the other two drugs are called mycophenolate and tetrolimus. Out of these three drugs, the steroids we typically stop at the end of six months after surgery and the patient will be on lifelong two drugs uh, and this medication has to be continue, continue lifelong. The dosage of tacrolimus is adjusted depending upon the blood levels of the drug and uh, the kidney function which is monitored by using blood creatinine as a marker. The uh, outcomes are excellent and uh, over 90% of these patients are alive at five years and uh, almost 30 to 40% of these patients are alive at 30, 35, 40 years after a transplant. So this is the only operation which can restore you to complete normal life when you have a heart which is so diseased and damaged that your expected survival with your own heart is not more than a few months. Uh, there is some uh, increased suscept susceptibility to infection which is possible because of immunosuppressive drugs so you have to be careful especially in terms of going in very crowded places or eating roadside foods or taking um, uh, uncooked uh, vegetables or meat from roadside vendors but as long as one takes proper precautions the outcomes today are excellent and the quality of life is outstanding. Coming to heart transplants in children, uh, today transplants are possible right from a uh, newborn period to the age of 18. And we have done close to 100 transplants. The youngest has been a few months old. And the outcomes actually are very, very good. In fact, they are even better than adults. Very small children, the immunological system is underdeveloped. As a consequence, if you put in a new heart from another individual at a very young age, uh, the body seems to accept these organs better than adults do. Uh, <clears throat> what kind of um, patients require a pediatric heart transplant? Typically, these are children who suffer from a condition called dilated cardiomyopathy, where the heart muscle is weak, or restrictive cardiomyopathy, where the heart muscle becomes too thick. It is also indicated in some patients where, because of viral infections involving the heart, 
the heart gets so damaged that nothing else is possible. Increasingly, pediatric heart transplants are done in children who had a previous repair of a congenital heart defect, especially a condition called, say, Fontaine operation, where 15 to 20 years after the operation is done, increasingly we see patients whose ventricles or whose hearts heart pumping capacity has come down and whose lung pressures are rising. So failing Fontans is now increasingly recognized as an important indication for a pediatric heart transplant. And as I said, the current outcomes are very good and uh, a lot of these children are expected and do in fact survive beyond 30 to 35 years with an excellent quality of life.